Yo, what it do, guys? And welcome back to another video. Now, this is going to be a big one because there's a lot to go in Spain here. But Varuna also got a brand new augment in Kobe and the Five Fates. So we're going to be tackling a steel path build with her. Um, and uh, I'll go and put the augment up here on screen. Uh, it's also going to be a prayer diner build. But we are going to mix with another build that she used to have because this just enhances the builds a bit further. So without further ado, let's go and just jump, jump straight into it. And we're going to go and break down the kit and what you need to go and know firstly. Okay. So we'll start off with this, her passive. Now, her passive and the way that it works is basically for each ability, whenever you go and read them, you can see it here where it says holds. Um, for each ability, they're going to go and give you different things. So a quick rundown of how this works. Um, her first is parkour velocity. Her second is protection to status effects. So basically status immunity is fantastic. Her third is um, heavy attack efficiency. And then her fourth is basically like a survival. It's a get out of jail card free um, once every 60 seconds so when it comes down to it if you want a quicker breakdown ideally you're mostly going to be playing with her second on status immunity protection is insane especially when you consider things like prime short footage um then you'll literally get in that for free so ideally whenever you play your mission start off by holding down two and that's what we're going to do okay otherwise four is also fine and if you are traveling the rounds one is also fine it's very very rare that i'm going to hold down three all right so mostly two okay excellent next part is going to be straight in towards her first ability which is shadow diner now there's a lot going to cover here um so i'm going to try and go and do this as quick as i can um so shadow diner when activated it's going to go and give you a whole bunch of different buffs it's going to give you invisibility it's going to give you criticals so that's critical chance and critical damage it's going to give you movement speed and it's going to give you status and the way that it basically works is whenever you go ahead and press the ability whatever you do next like like weapon wise so if i go and shoot it breaks the invisibility okay now it doesn't break on her abilities so keep that in mind so let me go and just drop the die rigor right now there we go it doesn't break on her ability so if i go and press this and i melee it breaks but if i go and press this and then i go ahead and press that it doesn't break okay so it won't break on your abilities right but it does reveal her on her second ability and her fourth ability so if you see if i go and jump towards this character look at varuna you see how we can see her just for a brief moment there well that's basically what's happening is that you can reveal yourself now something that's interesting about stealth as well and for those who don't know there is a way that you can change how your stealth looks you can go towards appearance you can go towards i think it's attachments and then you go towards the uh this one here if there's a warframe that can go invisible you can click on this and you can change how the invisibility looks i'm not going to talk about it much further than there i'd like semi cloak but it's up to you guys what kind of cloaks that you guys want to go and take i just think semi cloak looks really really nice but for those who don't know on a visible frames have a little look at that all right so shadow diner also gives you 100 additive critical chance this basically means if you had uh, a weapon that you was using and it had like one percent chance to go and create which is very 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 low i mean you can't get any lower than that's one percent chance this would basically go ahead and bump it up to 100 percent. okay regardless if there's any weapons that you have or even like an ability that goes over 100 percent critical it doesn't benefit for the 100 percent critical chance from shroud of diner this puts you to 100 percent caps you out and then leaves you there all right so if you if you really exceed that in your weapons and so forth you don't benefit from it okay cool so uh right next thing uh next uh, next ability is fangs of uh fang oh no sorry let's talk, talk about the augment that we have now so it also has an augment which is called prey of diner and again i'll just put that up on the screen what prey of diner now does to shroud of diner is it now adds uh, an enemy uh sorry it now adds a vulnerability to a enemy so it can be a random enemy so now when i press one that one's now glowing so you see if i go behind these guys you see how you can see them glowing if i go behind this see that so this basically means that this enemy has been marked now when the enemy is marked there's a few things to go ahead and know first of all the color of the enemy can be changed by changing your ability color okay so go towards your appearance and then i'm just going to move my camera real quick and then just down here energy color now mine is white and black because i'm color deficient that's what i see but if you want to go and change it to hot pinks if you want to go and change it to light blues whatever you guys want to go and change it to change it to something that you will be able to see on enemies so i'm going to do that this one's marked right cool when this enemy is marked there's two things to know the first thing is vulnerability this enemy now is 
50% vulnerable to incoming damage. That does scale off strength. Okay, so it's 50% vulnerable to incoming damage. It scales of strength. The second thing to go ahead and know is um, this now synergizes with her second ability called Fangs of Rash. So Fangs of Rash, we'll have to explain how this works, but Fangs of Rash is basically like a spread build. Um, so Shroud, uh, sorry, Prey of Dina, when this enemy is marked, when, I, when this enemy dies with the abilities on this, um, it will now spread 150% more. So it's 150% basically into the range, right? I'll show you in the build how that kind of works. You'll see that a little bit later, but that's basically what's going on. When they're vulnerable like this, you always want to use your second ability on that target, on that target in specific, okay? So that's what you're gonna be doing. Right, let's go and talk about Fangs of Rash, right? Now, Fangs of Rash, and the way that the ability works is, if you look at an enemy here, if you go and press two on them, you will apply five, uh, sorry, you'll apply 10 stacks of five random elements, okay? Now, there's 13 elements, I'll put it on, I'll look here, I'll put it on the screen. There's 13 elements that you can go ahead and proc. IPS, heat, toxin, the, the four basic elements, IPS, the three physical elements, the four basic elements, and then the six combined elements. Okay, so it can't prop things like void, it can't prop things like lifted, so forth, you get the idea, all right? Now, the way that Fangs of Death basically, basically works is when you go and put it on an enemy, um, you put on five, Let's go and scale these enemies down just so it's a little bit easier if you guys can see. Now, if I go and do this on a enemy here, and if this is, if this enemy dies, it will then spread those elements to the other enemies, okay? Now, this is where it gets very important. This is what I need you guys to understand. Even if you were to apply another five e uh, elements on top of it, so let's go and maybe change these to 40 because they died way too quick there. So we're going to put this here. So there's the five elements. Hopefully we can see this and then die. So you can see that it's the same five elements. Whatever five elements you apply on this target, all of the other targets will also get the same five elements. So if you put five elements on this target and then another five elements, so you press Fangs of Rash twice, it will still only get the first set of elements that didn't expire. So if I do this, where it's electric and all of that. Those will be the five. If I do this again, it doesn't matter. It won't get those new, so I do this again, it doesn't matter. They won't get these new ones. See, it will only take over the ones that didn't expire at the ends, okay? I just, it's, it's a lot to take in, I realize that. So, um, other enemies on death as well. So if I apply it on this enemy, and then this enemy dies and applies it to this enemy. When this enemy dies, does it apply to this enemy? No. Okay, Fangs of Rash only applies to the initial target that you put it on. Does that make sense? Hopefully you're with me so far. I've realized there's a lot to talk about with Fangs of Rash, but it's a bit simple. So hopefully I'm explaining it very well. Okay, so if I apply it on this one, this enemy dies, it will apply to all of these ones. When all of these enemies die, will it apply to those ones over there or those ones over there? No. Okay, it's just a one-time proc that is anybody in the area will receive it. Um, now, what's also good about it is the elemental spreads. So when this one dies, if there's an enemy behind here, like behind here, it will spread to this enemy. It does not require line of sight. Okay, this is very important because that is really, really good. So if one enemy is like behind a wall crouching like this, it, when this enemy dies, it will still spread onto this enemy who's trying to protect themselves, which is great. So it does not require line of sight only on the elemental spread. It does require line of sight to press onto the enemy. Okay, so if I can't see the enemy... Okay, I was going to say, if I can't see the enemy, I can't really go ahead and jump to them. There you go. That's, <laughs> I'm so glad I called out a video. Um, that's what's supposed to happen. All right. <laughs> Oh, so I think I just about like fell out of the hitbox range when I came around the corner. I don't know, it's bizarre. Anyways, so you need line of sight to jump onto them, but when they die, they don't need line of sight to other enemies to go and spread it, okay? Now, I'm just going to talk about a few things and the way that this works with the uh, Prey of Dina. So I'm going to put this on screen here as well because we're going to put into some numbers. On my build, I have 265% range, okay? So that's going to be about 18.55 meters that an enemy 
enemy who's affected by just Fangs of Rash, her second ability, when they die, it'll be an 18.55 meter spread. Okay? Prayer Diner is going to add 150% to that. So overall, it's going to increase it to a 46 meter spread, but only on the one enemy that's marked. So if I now hit this enemy with two, it's an 18 meter spread. But if I hit this enemy with two, it's going to be a 46 meter spread. Does that make sense? That's how Fangs of Rash and Prayer Diner work together. All right? Cool. So the rest of the kit. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this so far, all right? So the rest of the kit. So her third ability is called Lycus Hunt. Okay, um, very easy to go ahead and go over this one, but I'm going to take us down here so you can go ahead and have a little read as well. Um, so ideally, what's going to happen here is whenever you go and kill an enemy with a melee attack, they drop health orbs. And if you kill an enemy with a headshot, um, they drop energy orbs. So this is really good for Equilibrium. There's a mod called Equilibrium. Um, maybe I'll put it on the screen there. Or it's also really good, as you can see, I've got a shard here called Talforge Violet Shard. Health pickups give 30% energy. Um, energy pickups give 30% health. Basically, it synergizes really well with that. Now, furthermore, um, this will stay active the it's kind of like if you guys ever played jaya if you've not played jaya this might not make sense but her cathode grace you might see where i'm going with this if you kill the ability stays alive longer it's the same with this if enemies are affected by fangs of rash uh, they have five or more statuses on them this you won't need to recast this ability so long as you keep killing enemies that have five or more statuses um this ability just basically increases in time right so you see duration per kill at the bottom excellent okay so basically you should if you do this right you should only cast this once with this build and you won't ever have to cast it again because her fourth this is where it gets really weird her fourth is coded as a melee for lycus hun on kill but her fourth is also not coded as a melee for mods like an aura mod like steel charge i know i don't ask it's weird but anyways the point is is that you can go ahead and kill enemies with your fourth and it will go ahead and extend the duration of this well sorry kill with your fourth with the seconds and it will extend the duration of that <laughs> so let's take it anyways thankfully that's the end of that one all right now all friends descent let's go and talk about this when you go ahead and press four you holster all your weapons so you can't use primary secondaries or melees right now okay you have holstered all of it this you are now the weapon right what's going to happen is that on the reticle you see in the middle there maybe i'll like yeah hopefully i'll like zoom in or something like that on the reticle you have five charges five brutal charges every one of these charges will jump towards an enemy so we're going to do it here i'm just going to click and it will hit them with a guaranteed, so it's direct damage, but it will also guarantee a slash proc. Now, these might be a little too high that they might die. There's a slash proc, okay? It'll also do a little bit of radial AOE slash. Keep that in mind. But although it does do that, that's not important. I know that sounds a bit weird. Just try not to remember that. It happens, but it's not important to what's going to be going on with one of her augments in a moment, all right? Now, the good thing about her fourth, and pay attention here, is that her fourth synergizes from the bonuses that you get from her first. As in, it gets the crit chance, the crit damage, and so forth. So her first synergizes with her fourth. Her fourth also synergizes from her second. If an enemy has at least one status on them, you will get bonus damage to that enemy on her fourth. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. So her second and her fourth synergize, her first and her fourth synergize. They're kind of buffing her fourth. Now her third as well, like how I said earlier, also synergizes because it, it's coded as a melee kill. So you can also go ahead and extend the duration of your third in tangent with her second and her fourth. There's a lot of synergy being at play here, which is great. Now, I'm going to look over here so you get like a nice dark background. I'm going to put this up on the screen. Don't be afraid. Let me explain what's happening, right? So in terms of how it scales, in terms of like damage and what's going on with Ulfren's Descent, is that easy way to understand this, I'm going to condense it down for you, is that ability strength will increase the damage. Every kill that you're doing here increases different things. So um, you get critical damage on kill. And for each kill that you get, you get 0.1, which is going to be 10%, right? Now, if you get five kills, which, which, which will ask you to go and use five charges, you get a maximum of 45% critical damage, right? Hopefully I'll have this like again in text right here. 
Um, the direct damage also scales on, again, direct damage on kills. So you get 200%, but it caps at five for a total of 900%. Shroud of Diner also affects the damage that you do on all friends with the critical damage. It's 200% base, but that also scales off ability strength. So remember, just if, if that's too much to understand, ability strength and kills. Okay, so you see how simple that was? Ability strength and kills with Shroud of Diner active, right? Now, the other things going to take in mind is, you know, those kills that you're getting in order to get the most benefit out of those, you're basically never going to get that benefit if you don't run her augment called, I'll put it on screen just for a second. It's called uh, All Friends Endurance, okay? You, you physically won't be able to reach and extend that cap at that point. So you need that augment. Um, we'll explain what the augment does in a moment, but you need that augment to go ahead and continue to benefit from the on-kill increase on All Friends Descent, all right? Now, um, you do get increased damage on enemies affected by at least one status effect. That's where Fangs of Rash can come in. Or keep in mind, if you hit an enemy once with All Friends Descent, you put a slash proc on them. So the second time you hit them, you will also get increased damage because they're affected by a slash proc. Okay. And then Prey of Diner, which is the Augment. <laughs> Prayer Dino, which is the first augment, also adds damage vulnerability that scales of ability strength. That will also affect the damage that you do to them because it's damage vulnerability. So now it doesn't scale off steel charge and aura mods. Okay, so if you're going to put steel charge on your build, don't. It doesn't scale off that, but it will also get more damage from a subsumable like Rhino's Roar. Okay, so if you end up putting Rhino's Roar somewhere in the kit, if you really wanted to, it would also go ahead and synergize off of that. As you can see, she synergizes pretty well, so I don't really need Rhino's Roar right now. So then we've got her Augment. And again, I'll just pop it up on the screen here. Um, All Friends Endurance. Now, basically, the way that this works is whenever I go into her four, I only have five charges. I can't get any more. Once I've used all five charges, um, I'll just show you here. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, I've got it on me. Never mind. Um, so once I've used all five charges, um, I can't use All Friends Descent anymore. But as you can see, I have the Augment on me. So as you can see, I've now got that combo multiplier at the bottom there, times nine, and then times 10. So that means I've now officially maxed out on All Friends right now. So I'm getting that 900% damage increase. So if an enemy dies to direct damage from All Friends Descent, or it die dies to the to the slash proc of All Friends Descent, All Friends Endurance gives you another charge. Okay, just to put that simply. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, that was a lot to cover. She has a lot to turn over, but now let's go ahead and get into a build, all right? I know that's a lot to go and break down, but I'm hoping you guys might have learned something new. And hey, if you did, hit the thumbs up, all right? Because I've been testing like a madman today. <laughs> Anyways, right, let's go ahead and go into a build of her. We'll go and get to some other things in a moment. Let's go ahead and click on this and bada bing, bada boom. Let's explain what's going on here. So this is the build that I'm currently running. Let's explain a few things to go and start off with. I am running two augments, two augments. The first one is Orphan's Endurance, as I have explained in the ability side of things that we just went over. If you did skip ahead, ahead, ahead here, I'd recommend to listen to the ability side of things. There's a lot to take in. Uh, just to prove my point, these are my notes just to prove my point that's what i was going over <laughs> okay but anyways back towards the build all friends endurance is going to help us remain in all friends descent okay it's going to give us charges but only if we kill with direct damage from all friends descent or a slash proc from all friends descent this will give us charges back we want to stay in all friends descent prey of diner is going to synergize with shroud of diner and fangs of rash so remember this is actually going to be able to apply a vulnerability onto them and then using fangs of rash um sorry it's when you press your first this is going to proc or i've already showed it anyways and then you use your seconds and then when they die to the seconds you get a 150 percent increase so when i go ahead and hover over my fangs of uh rash here the spread radius uh, it's the bottom one i know this says spread radius okay the bottom one says 18.55 i have 46 meter spreads all right due to this which is great because now it doesn't mean i have to kill just with this i can also kill with this um together so i'm spreading and dotting and killing and dotting and spreading the dot okay don't get me wrong there's randomness in the elements i can't always control which element i'm doing so let's talk about that really quickly i have arc on stretch in the build now normally i want range anyway so you can go and put stretch in this build stretch gives you 45 percent ability range 
Archon Stretch gives you 45% ability range, but any ability that also deals electric damage will also restore energy over time. Now, it's not entirely needed, but there's no harm in having it. It's just, like I said, you're not guaranteed electric on here. There's Electric is one of 13 different elements that you can apply, okay? So technically, using this more often is actually going to help you with this and get energy back. You can put it in. It's not a necessity. If you want to put just stretch in there, put stretch in there. Okay, that's the rundown. Now, the second thing that's also going to be a bit random is also this one here. This is called Arcane Ice Storm. On enemy frozen, because keep in mind, you're going to be doing 10 stacks. It's 10 random stacks. Yeah, five elements of 10 random stacks or 10 random stacks of five elements. But basically on enemy frozen, gain 2% ability strength and 2% ability duration for 15 seconds. So I can basically go and get 40% ability strength and 40% ability duration. That is going to be good for two things. It's going to be good for when I re-enter this. I'll explain that in a moment. And it's also going to be good for just Shroud of Dina at any point. Okay, just getting a little bit of extra ability duration allows this to scale so I don't have to cast it as often, which is great because now they can remain invisible. And uh, furthermore, the strength is also going to up the critical multiplier, which is also great. So um, overall, that's just fantastic. <laughs> so this actually synergizes. But again, I don't control the elements. So if you don't want to take either of those, you don't have to. If you want something else to put in here, um, malt efficiency, if you want to. Um, this one here. Okay, while shields are active, gain 6% ability duration per second up to 36. That's also fine. You could do that. If you want to as well, you can also go and use um, Vigor, Molt Vigor, which is also strength. You'll use this on your fourth. I'll explain the fourth in a, in a moment because we'll get to this in a moment. So from there onwards, the rest of the build that I want is range. So that's going to be the main thing that we go to. We want to spread elements as much as possible. Okay, that's just going to help our overall DPS, our overall KPM. All right, enemies are dying, enemies are dotting, we're just chilling. We lunge towards enemies, we lunge towards new things. Lovely jubbly. So range is really good. From there onwards, duration is a great quality of life. Don't sleep on it. Now, the main thing that you are, this will, I think this scales total amount off of it, but I think it also has a cap. I can't quite remember. But again, Shroud of Diner. I don't want to be casting Shroud of Diner like every five seconds. So if I can bump this up, that's great. This is going to help it. That's going to help it. You know, lovely jubbly. From there onwards, what we're also going to go ahead and get into the build. Oh, you might wonder why I've also got the extra 20% because this is 55. So where's the extra 20%? That's here, but we'll cover those in a moment, okay? <laughs> um, so the rest of the build, strength. Strength, 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 okay? You want to do damage. Now, you can't see it right now, but on top of the 139% that I've got, I'm adding 225%. This is where it comes from. Mo augmented on kill ability strength stacks up to 250 times. So I need to keep killing over and over again. 250 stacks will give me 60%. 60%. This is also going to give me um, 25% for six seconds as well. That's going to synergize with this over here, the Grimoire. Now, you do not have to use the Grimoire, but Vome Invocation is going to give you an extra 60%. Okay. So this is also really, really good. So I get 60% from that, right? Um, I'm also going to go into Matarai. Let me explain Matarai real quick. So Matarai down here, Sling Strength is also going to give me an extra 40%, okay, for 20 seconds. So <laughs> keep this in mind. And then the other thing is I'm going to get an extra 40% from this as well. I think I covered all of it. Uh, 60, 60, 40, that's 100%. Sling and Grimoire, 60, 40, that's 200%. This is 25, 225%. Yeah, maths, there you go. Right, the way that I would do this is we want to get the most out of this. For anybody who doesn't know this, there's a term called snapshot, okay? Um, it's snapshot strength. Basically, whenever I enter this ability, whatever strength I have at that current time, including buffs, yeah, will we'll go into that ability. And so long as I don't come out of that ability, it will remain that strength. Even if the even if the timers for the buffs expire, this is only six seconds, right? But so long as I get this, so long as I get this propped before I enter that, we're good, okay? So it will take that 25. Does that make sense? Okay, in terms of combination and the way that I would do it, um, we still got other things going to talk about, but in terms of combination, the way that I would do it is, uh, I've only just added this in, I think it is, um, get this as 200, so start your mission with all friends ascent, kill things, off you go, lovely jubbly. Once you get 250 stacks, 
try to go and get this proc. okay again keep in mind it's random when it can go and proc because you're you're banking on 10 stacks of colds you get that proc you got 40 percent now now this is a headache for you guys you don't have to do this all right but you got 40 percent now now as soon as this is now proc that's 15 seconds i'm now gonna go ahead and sling into the ground or sling towards enemies so i sling and if you don't know if you don't know what the sling looks like just basically do this so go here switch back see that sling strength see I, I just i look into the ground i cloak i space space i come back out there you go ability strength so sling towards some enemies once you sling towards some enemies into the grounds, then go ahead and sh middle click with this. When you middle click with this, it's going to give you 60% and that is instantly going to basically proc off of it. As long as your, as long as your status damage is high on the build, uh, status chance is high on the build, that's going to proc off of it. When you do it in that order, now press four. I know there's a lot to take in. Take some practice with it, okay? Take some practice with it. Recap, build this up, proc this. Once you've done that, sling strength, shoot your grimoire this will automatically proc with the grimoire press four okay but do make sure that your grimoire gets 60 percent like look at look at your buffs in the top right up here and make sure it says 60 percent when it says 60 percent your, your status chance on your growing power is automatically proccing with it all right now if that's too much because i realized like that's a lot of min maxing if you don't care about that you can drop this and put in brief respite brief respite works really well as a backup whilst you're invisible it helps you with shield gating this also helps me with shield gating but this also just adds towards it so if you want to do that you can do because i realized what i just said there was so much and you might be like oh my god what the hell i don't want to do all of that you don't have to all right just the idea is that you'll get way more strength on this so when i next cast it i got 225 percent increased ability strength so this damage is going to ramp up significantly okay so uh, that's what else you can go and do now prime flow she's actually a really low energy warframe i want you guys to understand that i have a tau for shard on me to increase energy which means she has 150 energy it's so little to work with all right it's so so little to work with um so prime flow to me is my necessity i recommend it i think it's good on low energy warframes if that wasn't the case you could go and take it out but it's up to you if you can sustain it if you can't sustain it put it in all right and from there onwards i think i covered the rest right this is just um oh yeah so yeah I, I don't mind going lower ability efficiency because i've got well i've got it in my shards if you don't have it in your shards make sure you have the the, the mod called equilibrium so if you're like okay well i don't have the violet shards where do i put this put it over reach if you want to okay that's fine just put it in there or put it over, well, no no put it over reach all right so as long as you got this you'll be okay because that's going to synergize with this and then that way you can go low efficiency because you're always being able to proc with this and then that's going to convert the orbs and then when you pick the orb up you get energy the health orb you're going to get energy you just yeah you get the idea anyway so that's basically the build hopefully i've explained all of that oh and also preparation here you don't need prime sure footed if you're running her second uh passive but if you're not running her second passive and you run a one you want to go in and run her first or her fourth passive then you can put prime sure footed here but thankfully you don't have to put prime sure footed there right <laughs> that's really nice so um hopefully i've just kind of gone over everything i don't think there's anything else going to explain so gameplay up on the screen right here um yeah that was a mouthful right <laughs> thank you guys so much for for dealing with uh or listening to all of that tangent right there but hopefully you learned a thing or two and hopefully i didn't spend too much time yapping anyways the build and how you can see the gameplay it's um it's a good build like i'm really enjoying it i think it has really good damage output i think it has really good survival due to the invisibility and enemies just being dead um the range on the build you can definitely feel so if you don't put a lot of range in the build you won't really feel a lot of the prey of diner so keep that in mind so you definitely want to bump the range up there and don't be afraid to use your all friends endurance to its full advantage if you want to go around dashing into more enemies dash into more enemies um the kpm of the build is enough that inside solo steel path lure conjunction survival um i didn't really have that much of an issue with life capsules because i was just killing so many enemies sufficiently but it did require me to be a bit more aggressive so if you're going to sit around and wait for dots of prey of diner and fangs of rash you're going to have a bit of a problem okay so just keep that in mind 
But overall, again, good good utility due to Lycus Hunt. We didn't really find ourselves running out of energy too often. Don't be super spammy on your second ability, especially if you run Blind Rage, um, because it's going to cost a lot of energy. So um, if you are going Blind Rage and you're high on your efficiency, chill out on your Fangs of Rash, all right? Now, my biggest advice on this one is, yes, Prey of Diner adds vulnerability to an enemy, but God forbid, don't spend all your time looking for that one enemy, okay? You're better off just killing and moving, killing and moving until you find the enemy in your sights, all right? If you're just constantly spinning the camera around, you're already going to have a problem. That was the problem that I had. I spent too much time looking for an enemy. It was not worth it, in my opinion, all right? Now, overall, though, I think it's a really great build. It's definitely one that I would encourage playing, and it's kind of just like an advanced all for an endurance build, all right? The Acolytes don't stand a chance against you. Frax won't stand a chance against you. You can one-shot enemies. You can uh, clear enemies and hordes. It's a fantastic build. Uh, let's go and bring me back right over here as well, because I think I'm about done. That's a 30-minute video right there, baby. Um, I hope you guys learned a thing or two about Varuna. Really fun augments to go ahead and pair with a current build that she already had with the Orphan's Endurance, now with Prey, Prey of Dinah. Um, so all I can go and say is if you guys enjoyed today's video, hit the video with a... I don't know what I'm doing. Hit the video with a like. <laughs> go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're new and share the video with someone else who you think might go ahead and enjoy this. But thank you guys so much for being here. I really do truly appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys again in the next video. Bye-bye, guys. Take care, everybody. Take care. <laughs>